Thanks very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm, I'm afraid my uh, Spanish runs to uh, uh, Buenos Dias, and that's about it. So I'm, I'm afraid it's going to be English. Um, this is how I looked last night uh, at Madrid Airport um, after we missed our connecting flight to Santander. So it's a, a great pleasure to be here today. Um, I, I'm a cardiologist uh, rather than a surgeon. Uh, but I think whether you're a, sur a surgeon or a cardiologist, everybody's seen a big increase in lead extraction. This is um, my experience at uh, Manchester Royal Infirmary. Um, and we're going to probably take out between 350 and 400 leads this year. Um, Dr. Sylvester has given a, a very clear talk about um, some of the problems that we face and how some patients can be managed conservatively. But um, if you can read the name of the, um, of the device manufacturer without taking the device out, it's usually a sign that um, you've got no option but to extract. And unfortunately, we're seeing more and more patients who have um, what looks like a third breast. Um, but um, when we cut into it, we find, um, we find more malign problems and um, if you find patients like this, you really have no option but to remove the whole system. Um, I'm afraid the sound isn't working, but um, if you could hear, you could hear my technician going, <laughs> um, and um, unfortunately, we do see quite a number of these people. I hope you don't see them in your practice, but uh, I'm afraid I do in mine. And there are lots of reasons why we're seeing more extraction. So there's a lot more infection. We're seeing a lot more patients who have box changes and upgrades. Um, the days when we did one VVI that lasted the patient the rest of their life are gone. And patients are having much more regular procedures, longer procedures to put CRT devices in. Older patients with less body fat, fat causes more erosions. And there's a lot more lead failures because of problems like Riata and Fidelis. So we're going to see a lot more extraction over the next few years. And we know now that there are certain features that make extraction much more difficult. So passive fixation leads are always something that, that upset me. Um, I put all active fixation leads in and there's no doubt that passive leads are much more difficult to take out. ICD leads are more difficult, particularly dual coil leads, and I've moved over completely to single coil ICD leads now because of extraction difficulty, um, and when they've been in for a long period of time. And unfortunately, we do see patients living long enough so that you've got leads that are 20, 30, or occasionally 40 years old that have to be extracted. And we have to have help. You can't just pull those leads out. So this is how we used to do it. Um, uh, uh, my boss remembers these, um, these days where we used to attach weight to the end of the bed and wait a day or two and um, see what came out first, the leads or the heart. But um, I'm glad to say those days are over. Um, but what we know very clearly is just pulling as hard as you can is never a good idea because you just rip a hole in the heart and patients become very ill very quickly. And if you do cause SVC or right ventricular tears particularly, the chances of surviving that are only about 50%, even if you have the surgeon in the room with you, which in the UK we don't. Um, this is something I always, um, I always um, blame on my registrar if I'm doing a procedure, but Occasionally, you will see big chunks of meat at the end of leads if you just pull hard. So we have to avoid this. There are three difficult areas for extraction. So there's the area under the clavicle. There's the area at the SVC turn and in, in the junction with the innominate, and then the lead tip. And it, fibrous adhesions in those areas make extraction particularly difficult. So mechanical extraction is often needed, particularly when the lead is of any age. The leads also stick together, and lead adhesions can be a particular problem, um, and it can be very difficult um, taking leads out, particularly single leads when there's m multiple adhesions on, uh, binding the leads together. 
The principle of mechanical extraction is to use the lead as a rail, to use the lead to guide the extraction sheath um, over the lead to disrupt the fibrous bands and to get the lead out safely. And it's where people fail to use the lead as a rail that you end up in trouble, particularly in the SBC. Um, Dr. Sylvester has already talked about locking stylets. Um, there are various different locking stylets. I tend to use the liberator as, as, as he described. But the advantage of locking stylets rather than ordinary stylets is they lock into the lead and allow you to apply a traction along the length of the lead, particularly at the lead tip, to avoid pulling the lead apart. The problem is that to use them, you have to cut the lead. And invariably, that makes the lead weaker. So it's always something that you have to think carefully before you embark on locking stylets. But the most important thing is we don't just use traction. We use a combination of traction at the lead tip, but also counter traction with an outer sheath to help us get the lead out. And that's the principle of all the techniques that are going to be discussed today, whether it be mechanical sheaths, laser, or electrocautery, that they apply traction and counter traction to get the lead out safely. Oh, sorry, my mistake. So mechanical dissection, the principle is that we advance sheaths over the lead using the lead as a rail to dissect away the fibrous bands that connect the lead to the vessel and allow us to take the lead out safely. And you, this can be done using passive um, mechanical sheaths, using a counterclockwise, clockwise rotation of the lead and advancing it carefully over the sheath uh, sheath over the lead to dissect the bands away. And you can go all the way down to the lead tip and then hopefully remove the lead safely. And there are various sheaths, metal sheaths were described earlier. I tend to use polypropylene sheaths if I'm going to use um, these um, non-powered sheaths. And they're available in various sides to accommodate any lead. And they, they work pretty well, but the problem is they only remove a, just over half of all ICD leads and no more than three quarters of, of pacemaker leads. So they're not a, a, a perfect solution by any means. And that's why I've now moved over to powered sheaths by and large. And the Cook sheaths, the Evolution and the Evolution Shorty, um, I, I find particularly good for dissecting over the fibrous bands, over the lead, and getting the leads out. And I'll show you an example in a minute. And the idea is that you press the handle and it rotates the um, cutting sheath and allows you to dissect through the bands. And you can see the, these are the tips of the evolution on the left and the shorty on the right. And they have a cutting uh, burr which allows you to dissect through the bands much more easily than using passive tools. Laser is going to be discussed in a minute. I've used some laser. and uh, It has a different technique than evolution because evolution, you, you have a, a two-handed technique so that you, you push with one hand and you pull with the other hand and you have a have more tactile feel. Whereas with laser, you don't have to push. The laser does the work. Some people prefer laser, some people use yeah, prefer evolution. Uh, I think it's very much personal choice, but I find the feedback that you get with the evolution particularly good at uh, allowing me to take leads out safely. And electrocautery is, is still used in some centers, although it's, it's largely dying out of fashion. There are femoral tools available as well. Um, so um, snares like the needles eye snare hook over the lead. Um, you advance the, um, the, uh, the central leaf you then snare the lead and pull it back into a sheath, and that allows you to remove it through the femoral. And that can be particularly good when you can't get locking stylets down to take leads out that have been in there for some time or left ventricular leads. And there are also transjugular techniques um, described. Maria Bongiorni is a great advocate of this. And if effectively, you pull the lead through the binding site, lasso it from the neck, the end of the lead, um, in the right atrium is lassoed, and then you can use either traction or powered sheaths to take it out through the jugular. Uh, I think it's quite a, 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 
a difficult technique to master um, and it leaves a big hole in the jugular vein. So it's not for everybody, but it can be useful in some situations. But whatever technique you use, I think the most important thing to say is lead extraction is now a very safe thing to do. The um, results are, are, are unif universally good in the studies, um, at least 95% success, sometimes approaching 100%, with very low mortality, mortality rates of 0.4%. Um, in, um, in the large studies. So it's a very safe and very effective treatment. I think if PCI was that effective, we'd, we'd be hearing about it every day. But it isn't, and extraction is. So this is an example of an evolution case, um, very quickly. So these are, this is a patient, a youngish patient, with two active fixation leads that were 10 years old, um, the patient had a venogram from the left arm before we started, and it showed that the uh, subclavian vein was completely occluded, and both leads had, had failed. Um, he wasn't dependent, but he needed two new leads, and we decided to try and um, do it from that, because of his age, try and do it from the same side as the occlusion. So to start off with, I just gave the leads a, a gentle tug to see if they would uh, come out easily. The screws had been retracted, but you can see that they didn't really want to, want, want to come back. So this is the evolution. There's an outer sheath. This is a steady sheath, so it's got a, a radiolucent tip. Uh, and this is an evolution, um, a, I think a nine French evolution, which goes over the lead. And the evolution is particularly good at getting entry into the vein, and then a lot of the dissection can then be done bluntly with the outer steady sheath. So we get into the vein, advance the steady sheath over the lead, and you can see we're now making very good progress, and using the, a combination of the steady sheath and the evolution, we've dissected down into the right atrium, and it all looks like it's going very well, really. So the, the outer sheath goes down to within a few centimeters of the lead tip, and it looks like one of those cases where the lead should come out quite easily, but it wouldn't. So uh, I decided I had to dissect a bit further. And um, at this point, we're now almost down to the tip of the lead. It looks like the lead should just lift out but it still won't come out. So now, using the inner evolution rather than the outer sheath, I just dissect a little bit further. And there the lead pops out. And one of the advantages of the evolution and the laser sheath is that you can also, where there is venous occlusion, get venous access. So now we can put a guide wire through the outer sheath. And now we have venous access so that we can insert new leads. And then with the, with the first lead out, the atrial lead can be removed. And now the steady sheath goes on very easily. And just using blunt dissection, just a little bit of clockwise, counterclockwise rotation, the tip of the lead, lead is freed, and the, the, the um, lead can be removed successfully, and using venous access, we can now implant two new leads. So mechanical devices can be extremely successful, and they greatly increase the success rates of extraction. As Dr. Sylvester has said, we can approach um, success rates of 100% using um, mechanical devices like evolution and evolution shorty. And I'd certainly give it a thumbs up from uh, the extraction point of view. Thank you very much.